This project is a component of a, a global effort to chart the warming that, that launched us out of the last ice age into the, the present interglacial condition. That was the greatest warming in human history, and yet we don't understand why it happened. It, it presents an, an amazing challenge to our understanding of climate dynamics. And we study, uh, or I study, the history of Earth's mountain glaciers because mountain glaciers are incredibly sensitive indicators of atmospheric temperature, summer temperature. And uh, we can see this over the past century. The iconic illustration of global warming is the worldwide recession of, of Earth's glaciers. Over these last decade plus, we have developed techniques that allow us to date the paleo glacier fluctuations very precisely. And we set up on a mission early on to come up with a global map of these changes, which will be ultimately translated into a global temperature map. So far in the moment, we have the two polar ice caps, Greenland and Antarctica, where we have these fantastic ice core records, which basically are almost 100% of our temperature understanding, how temperature fluctuated in the past, but it's on the poles, right? So it is not where people live, and it does not give you the full story. And the work in the Sierra that's led by Aaron Putnam is part of that. It fills a big gap in our global map in the Western US, where we don't have yet these high precision records of these big events. We came to Baboon Lakes in particular uh, because this region has been uh, studied before. There's been um, generations of glacial geologists studying these, uh, these glacial landforms. And this valley contains a particularly well-preserved set of landforms that document not only the, the, the diminution of ice since the last ice age, but a pause in that, in that pattern of glacier retreat, possibly even a re-advance that harkens to some uh, cooling event that interrupted the termination when it was nearly complete. And then subsequently after that uh, cooling event and that glacial resurgence, the ice retreated back up into the mountains uh, close to its present day position. But we're here for another reason too, and that is that the water that, uh, that flows from this mountain range supports an enormous population in California and Nevada. And that water is derived from melting snowpacks. And glaciers are a uh, long-term monitor of the health of the mountain snowpack. We can use the biggest warming in our history as a uh, means of calibrating our understanding of how the, uh, the snowpacks might diminish with future warming and, and, and affect how the downstream water resources feeding Los Angeles and other uh, communities might be impacted. First order, the glaciers did what the CO2 did globally. That would be very bad. But if that holds, this would have dramatic impacts. And if, if ice is so really regulated by CO2, then um, we would certainly have to face the reality that we already have committed to absurd amounts of sea level rise. Um, but also, the mountain glaciers, and they are certainly not a major player in the sea level rise, but wherever ice melts and you lose ice fast, it has a dramatic impact on the societies living there. So just the geology hints at something, that something big happened and it happened so fast that it, the ice couldn't achieve an equilibrium until the, most of the warming was done. So this could have happened over centuries. Or less. I, I don't know, but we'll, we'll find out. Nevertheless, in other parts of the world, we've found that the, the rates of warming out of the end of the last ice age are similar to the rates of warming that we're witnessing today. It's, a, it's an important uh, 
global experiments trying to teach us about how the climate system uh, responds to, to warming. And I think, I think this valley holds some of the secrets to that, to that mystery. Thank you.